Are you an accomplished engineer like myself? You own a multi-trillion dollar startup just like me? I acquired seven PhDs by the age of 10. But you know what? It's time to throw them all out the window. Why? Because object-oriented programming is dead. In your educational computer science experience, I'm sure you've heard of the paradigms object-oriented programming, functional programming, and procedural programming. By far, object-oriented programming is the most popular paradigm. To learn more about it, check out my video on it here. In short, object-oriented programming breaks large, complex problems into smaller chunks using a bottom-up approach. Its goal is to be extremely intuitive, organized, easy to read, and reusable. There's a reason why this paradigm is so popular. However, a major flaw in object-oriented programming can be summarized by a quote from Joe Armstrong. I asked for a <gasps> banana, but you gave me a gorilla with a banana. Think about wife. Regret. And the entire jungle along with it. With this analogy, I'm sure you can see just how object-oriented programming can become way too complex very quickly and inefficient as well. Would this mean that object-oriented programming is outdated now and even obsolete? So then let's dive into the alternatives, functional and procedural programming. In layman's terms, procedural programming goes statement by statement, whereas functional programming focuses on expressions without using states. Procedural programming follows step-by-step -step instructions using a top-down approach. Parallel processing is impossible with this type of paradigm. Procedural programming is easy to understand, debug, and test, all because it's sequential. However, procedural programming is primarily for procedural type tasks. Procedural tasks might look like startup or shutdown applications, such as bootloaders, instructions for a microprocessor, creating or tearing down users in a database. All of these are examples of tasks that don't really need to be any more complicated than they need to be. The drawbacks to procedural programming are the lack of security of data. It's not portable or reusable, and it can't really tackle big, complex problems. But do you really need anything like that when all I'm trying to do is just my typical morning routine? Do I need to timestamp and store with high security the time I brush my teeth in the morning? Now maybe if I drop my toothbrush in the toilet. Now on to functional programming. Functional programming boils down to utilizing mathematical expressions. Functional programming should be stateless. If we keep each function pure, as in one input will always have one desired output, there won't be any side effects. This is insanely reliable, even more so than object-oriented programming. It can handle complex problems as well. However, just like object-oriented programming, it can often lead to overkill. Did somebody say? Functional programming has no limits for recursion as well, which can make it slower than object-oriented programming, especially for graph-based projects. Also, when some projects get to be so large, do you really want to have a function for every little thing? Functions would be all over the place and potentially difficult to understand. That alone can cause some side effects. There's a major plot twist to this video. As engineers, no one has to pick one paradigm and stick to it forever. In fact, you can use a combination of all of them. Yes, object-oriented, functional programming does exist. It all just depends on what project you're trying to work on. The main issues that we might be facing today as large tech industries are purely object-oriented projects that were not supposed to be object-oriented projects and are therefore inefficient. And even worse, a lot of the projects in the industry are just way too large and complex over the years of writing it to completely rewrite it. This isn't really a new problem for the tech industry or something that pertains to programming paradigms only. This is why it's so important for engineers to be well-rounded in general and only see these things such as programming paradigms and programming languages as tools to success and not debate whether or not one is king. It should only ever be a debate for what's the best option given the context. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what paradigm in the comments that you like to use. Bye!